like you're in Fin Twister. <laughs> that likes a Titty Twister. <laughs> Hello, folks. All right. I'm on my way down to my buddy's shop. Now, for those of you that listen to the Rolling in My 5.0 podcast, you would probably be familiar with the individual that we're on our way to go see right now. So this is my buddy Daryl, AKA Muff. I don't know if he's gonna wanna get into telling you the story as to how he ended up getting that nickname. I don't know if you two would like it very much either if I'm being honest. But he owns a shop here in town by the name of Thiessen's Hot Rods. He also happens to have a YouTube channel. It is called Muff's Mayhem. So here we go again. Anyway, why I bring up the podcast and my buddy while well, we're going down to his shop, but I talk about him on the podcast quite often because he's one of these old school hot rodders that can tune a carburetor with earplugs in and his eyes closed. He uh, grew up in the 60s and 70s back in the good old days and uh, that's one of his better known specialties. People come from miles around just to have him rebuild their carburetor and uh, tune their cars. He does all kinds of new age stuff too, but uh, that's definitely one of the things that he is known for. So we're on our way down to his shop right now. He is gonna give me a hand tearing this supercharger apart. Here we go. Oh shit, even Al's here. Yeah, it is here. I, here. What, what are you trying to take pictures there everything or what? This is all for evidence. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> What's your evidence today? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yep. You might turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, update time. So we have been trying to figure out a way to bust this Kenny Bell supercharger apart. And thus far, our plan A didn't work out so well. So, I guess maybe I should explain what's going on here, at least to the best of my ability, because we are somewhat figuring this out as we go. 
There's a gear, this guy, that lives in here. And uh, that was pulled apart off camera. We kind of, we've been pulling this apart for a couple of weeks because both me and Daryl are a little tangled up in life and uh, whatever. We're trying to squeeze this in when we got time. So this gear is held in with this bolt right here and it is a left-handed thread. Now, the original tooling we had built, uh, I don't know where the hell it is, but anyway, uh, wasn't the, the best for the situation we're dealing with. So we've revisited and we're currently on the, on our way to building some new stuff. So we had a bar in here that had a couple of bolts in it. It was enough for us to get this bolt loose, which from what we've been able to understand online, it's about a 75 foot pound torque spec on that bolt. So this bolt has now been out, this gear has been removed, and we're working our way after getting this gear off of here. And what started out with, we were using drill bits, thinking, well, let's get some hard steel in there and uh, see what we can do to hold this thing in place. Well, drill bits are only hardened on the outside, not on the inside. So now we have a piece of 1964 hardened steel. Uh, we are also finding out that this, when you're dealing with machinist type materials, is on the fat side of 1964. So we very well may have to uh, buff this down a little bit to get it to fit. But essentially what we're trying to build here is this tool or well, what now looks like, it's starting to look like a tool, is going to sit flat on the bench like this. That uh, 1964 rod is going to hold that gear in place for us and allow us to spin this bolt out in the middle of that gear. And uh, anyway, so we're kind of on to plan B here with respect to all this. Um, there's very well gonna be some other alterations to this tool as we work our way through it because again we're learning as we go there's not a lot of info in the world or on the web that shows a person how to do this so we're figuring it out and those things don't piss around eh by good shit shit happens We do have the other gear off. Well, actually, it's more than just the gear. So it's this section. This goes on here, and that's what that great big bolt holds, okay? So this guy, oh Christ. Regular standard thread, left-handed thread. Um, and then here's the jig that we kind of had to build in order to, now these are not welded in there because the tolerances that we're messing with here are so ridiculously tight that, I mean, it's a little bit outside of our capacity to be any tighter than what we currently are and what we've currently built this tool at. So um, rather than weld them and risk like this thing being out you know, half a thou or whatever, and not being able to get it into the actual gear itself in order to bust that bolt loose. We said to hell with it. It's like a pretty much a friction fit in that gear with this 1964 tool steel. So uh, we just, whatever, essentially built our, our jig up here in uh, such a way that we had enough leverage on these tool steel studs that we could break that bolt loose and uh, get ourselves to the point that we're currently at right now. So it's kind of buffed off some of the old silicone on top. And now we need to break this case apart. And again, 
not a whole lot of information on how to do this. Um, so that being the front side, this being the back side, um, logic would tell that, you know, here and here, this thing needs to break apart off of here, and then we can ultimately get at these rotors. And uh, so the whole reason why, I don't know if I've really explained this, gotten into this mess is this hole here needs a Healy coil in it. And this section of the case is not threaded, but this part is. So in order to properly get a Healy coil in there, you essentially need to break this case apart to get in there. And then these are just aluminum threads too. So I thought, well, if I'm Healy coiling one, might as well Healy coil all of them and uh, properly seal this thing up. Um, probably a little bit of overkill because from what I can tell, these, oh, pardon me, these six bolts are not a massive torque that hold them in place. However, that one in the bottom corner is absolutely shot. There's no threads on it at all. So, and then, you know, upon closer inspection, I have done some wiping in here, but it does seem as though the seals in behind these bearings are tired because these rotors had all kinds of black shit on them. And uh, whatever, if you're going this far, you may as well go the whole way and tighten this thing up, brand new second hand. So, uh, now we're gonna figure out how to break this case apart. It's like doing a titty twister. <laughs> Relaxing titty twist. <laughs> okay, so those bottom out. Yeah. Well, the thing, the nice thing about bottom it out, that way you're not hitting on the threads, right? Because otherwise you're hitting on aluminum threads. It's always good when you bottom her out. Case apart. Screw City. Purdy. That's some shrapnel on through it, eh? Yeah, well, how old are the bearings, right? Yeah. You're going in with the other one. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, oh, this thing doesn't even really have anything to locate itself. So that one we were looking, oh, there is dowels here and here. What? That's why I said there, there has to be locating dowels, yeah. Right. And that's one of the holes that's got the threads pulled out of it too. Uh, it'd be this one, I think. Okay, just remember. Well, no, this here goes to the other side. That's top side? That's top side, yeah. Yeah. Any locators on that? Oh, it's just yeah. trimmed down a bit so yeah. it's a tight fit. room in here. So those are the 6205s? Yeah. What do them seals look like in there? Oh, they look mint. Can't be mint. They're pissing oil. Oh, yeah, huh? Interesting. Actually, has that one got some flipper back over? I think there was some galling in that one. A 
Those look interesting, eh? Okay, so this here. So that's the seal there and there. Yeah. So it's just a. Oh, that's the. That's the back side of it, like the. Okay. That's the back side of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. The eyes aren't what they used to be, huh? Yeah, but the brain is. <laughs> Status update, ladies and gents. So we are more or less fully disassembled. The only thing not disassembled, as you can see, is these rotors have not been removed from the back side of this case. And from what I understand, there are bearings inside each one of these rotors that are a smaller diameter than these front case bearings that do need to be removed. I can't really see any good reason as to why there would be a seal back there but anyway we're gonna find out I just need to figure out how these come off here I'm thinking that you know some wiggling back and forth they should just pull off of here there's no bolt or anything on the back side so I think they're just like in place and riding on that bearing but as you can see I can lift the whole thing up and nothing shakes loose so it's gonna take some dicking around um, these obviously to create a tight seal are very very tight so i'm thinking i'll just be able to wiggle them and and shake them loose hopefully anyway more to come on that but outside of that yeah everything is pulled apart now the cleaning operation needs to take place i should tell you too so the bearings and seals now you can buy a bearing and seal kit from what i understand from john bond performance i have spoke with these guys on the phone they're really good to deal with but as you guys know i'm up here in canada it doesn't always make sense for me to order things from the Americas because it takes way too long to get it and I get hosed on duties, taxes, whatever. So we're gonna try and source these locally, which I don't think should cause us too much grief. The seals might be a little tricky, but anyway, we're gonna take a stab at it and see what we can find. Again, gotta get the bearings out of these rotors so we know what we're dealing with there and we can get some replacements. But now the cleaning operation takes place, we'll get this all laid out and prettied up on the bench, get our bearings and hopefully start putting her back together. All right, rotor update. So many attempts have been made to try and get these rotors off of here. But the only thing I could initially figure out is it looks like there's a bit of a snap ring in here, but outside of that, not much. So I'm like, well, I don't know, maybe they just pull off of here, right? and uh so i've been dicking around with this for a while anyway long story short i mentioned them earlier i'm going to mention them again i talked to nick at john bond performance thinking like hey maybe there's some goofy little trick to this thing right and funny enough nick's like man i don't know you know he's like send me some pictures i'll see if i can figure it out for you and as we're yakking i'm like right this is where the gears bolt to, right? With these big uh, right hand, one's right hand, one's left hand thread. Like, I wonder if the hole's blind. So this is all happening while I'm talking to Nick on the phone. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, folks, but down in there is an Allen head bolt that holds these rotors to the back side or to this back bearing case. So then you gotta think to yourself, well, where the hell are we gonna find an Allen key that's long enough to go in there? So we just left the snap-on truck. Show out snap-on. We got ourselves. It's really tricky to find these, but take my word for it. We found the metric Allen head. There it is. That's gonna help us bump these guys off here. So stand by while that rotor's on the uh, bench shortly.
So now we got some more figure in here to try to figure out what the hell is going on with these bearings on the inside of these screws. Not real sure why this is threaded right here. Because there's nothing that these thread onto and they obviously spin at high RPM. I mean maybe they're threaded. You gotta put like a a bolt in there to pull this bearing out. So again yeah, figuring out as we go but there's the inner workings of the back side of these screws. Okay, status update. So we removed this threaded uh shit, I don't even know, aluminum spacer, I guess. So this guy butts up against this bearing and now this actually if you want to see the true view of what this bearing looks like, it's a sealed unit looks like that the only reason this has been pulled off there we pulled it to get the number off it so we could get the bearing ordered because as you can see the bearing is not pulled yet however we've been able to bump this little aluminum threaded spacer out of there as we pulled the snap rings off and got thinking about it a little more i mean it only makes sense that this should pull right out but it was a little tight in there right you can see some old hardened grease on this so it was uh, giving us a little grief coming out at any rate we ran a bolt into it and it popped so that's a win now this guy has given us more of a fight we're trying everything to get this bolt in there but the threading on this aluminum piece on this rotor is uh, not as tight as this one was so at any rate we're still trying to bump that one out of there but when we go to pull the bearing, this will obviously pop out of there as well. So the last step of this whole process is going to be getting these bearings out of the rotors. Uh, that one's in behind that. But anyway, uh, then we can start reassembling. So the all the bearings are actually on order right now and they're supposed to be showing up on Friday. So two of these guys, two of these guys and the seals and uh we've kind of upgraded the seals as well going with a higher temp unit i want to push pause on the disassembly process of this kenny bell blower for a moment and tell everyone a little bit of a story because it's just come to my attention that the amount of tooling and or tools that have either been built or bought in order to disassemble this supercharger is obscene okay I've given everyone a little bit of an indication as to what this was all for, right? This was the plate that we ultimately mounted to the front of the blower in order to tie our gear, like or hold our gear tight to, to take the bolt out of the gear from the center. We've purchased hardened rod in order to make that a reality. Like this stuff, if you've ever bought it, you know it's not cheap. It's about, well, for the five inches of it that we bought i think it was about 40 bucks this was purchased yesterday right in order to get ourselves down inside of this rotor and break the allen bolt loose that ultimately holds the rotor to the back bearing plate right that these rotors sit on these shafts in the back plate and the bolt threads in here today we've come to realize that we need to buy yet another tool in this case a set to pull the bearings out of the inside of these rotors. And now let me be clear to you here, folks, the amount of tools that my buddy has, like bearing pulling, seal pulling tools is absolutely outrageous, okay? I'm showing you just like a cross section of it. My buddy's shop is very, very well equipped. And even he didn't have something that could bail us out of this jam. So what these are all about is, we're dealing with very tight tolerances down inside these rotors. You don't have the ability to like get a, a hook style puller on the bearing. So like typically, you know, you'd have something like these guys, right? That go down, spread and then pull. Well, we don't have clearance in order to do that. Okay. So to give you a bit of an example, these are the bearings out of this front plate, but you can see like how little of clearance is underneath 
this bearing to this plate well that's what we're dealing with on the inside of this shaft right so we're trying to go inside with that much clearance and pull these bearings so how these guys work is you can see it's kind of got a flared end on it ever so slightly you tighten this bolt down it spreads and then you can actually get a bite on the bearing and pull it hopefully so that's what's going on right here or what will be going on and then there's ultimately like a slide hammer right to pull these out so yeah um there are outfits out there that specialize in this okay i've mentioned them before i've been on the phone with them during this process a couple times john bond performance they will rebuild your supercharger and now it's not cheap to send it to them but i now know why like the investment just in tools time to build tools that's gone into making this disassembly process a reality is crazy okay so plus the amount of time it takes to do it now granted i am doing this for the very first time don't know what i'm doing so the time is increased but even if you knew what you were doing it it's still very very time consuming there's hours involved in this especially to do it right and you're dealing with tight tolerances very very beautifully machined surfaces like you don't want to be going in here with the ugga dugga tools and and making it happen right like everything is within a thou of clearance or less so i just wanted to lay that out for everybody because yeah this has been a crazy adventure and it's like the rabbit hole that we all know and love or hate i'm down it i'm committed this is now happening so here we are anyway enough about that i hope that makes sense to everybody if you're going to do this just be ready to bust out your wallet and scratch your head a lot okay now i mentioned earlier the bearings are ordered okay so we are somewhat on time in order to get this stuff pulled get it all cleaned up and ready for reassembly there is going to be a freezer treatment we're going to have to freeze the bearings that go inside these rotors to shrink them ever so slightly to in order to press them back into the rotors so you're going to see that in the assembly process these guys aren't all that technical they're just kind of uh, pressed in seal goes in first bearing goes in after okay and then i ultimately still need to healy coil this housing it's actually this hole right here that's had the threads pulled out of it yeah this one um so i think what i'm going to do is go through and healy coil the whole thing both sides just to be on the safe side may as well while we're at this point and while it's dirty and then i can clean it all up get this bench looking ready to do surgery and we can start reassembly so i hope that helps folks if you're going to go down this road be ready okay it's a heavy lift a lot of head scratching and a lot of cash has been laid out in order to make this happen 